What are the characteristics of a good beginner workout routine? I think there are three bases it should cover. First, it should be effective. That's self-explanatory. We don't need to elaborate. Second, it should be scalable or progressive. If Mr. Beginner wants to gradually increase his work commitment, that should be easy and convenient to do. The beginner routine should be able to evolve into the expert routine. Third, and most importantly, it should promote adherence. The reason everyone isn't walking around lean and muscular is not because they've never been to the gym, it's because at some point they stopped going. And then there is actually a fourth consideration and that is the balance between these factors. You see, the most effective routine on paper might not be easy to adhere to in real life and if you don't stick to it, it's not that effective. And if it's not scalable, it's not that effective over the long term, which means you're less likely to stick to it. And there's all these synergistic reciprocal relationships, but you get the idea. A holistic viewpoint is required and we might have to make some trade-offs here and there. Now, I expect you've got a life to get to, maybe a spaniel and a 6% variable. So I'm just going to immediately show you an example of what I think constitutes a great starting routine for somebody who is new to lifting and wants to improve their body composition. And then I'll elaborate and explain all of my logic later in the video. So if you do just want to get the goods and dip out, you can, although I will feel somewhat used. First, I'd start with three training days. Instead of the typical push-pull leg split, which is pretty popular and still a good choice, I'd do a horizontal push-pull day, a vertical push-pull day, and a leg day. I'll explain why later. I'd actually do the horizontal day first, and then the leg day, and then the vertical day, with at least one rest day between each training day, so ideally something like this. For day one, I'd start with a flat dumbbell press. When you first start lifting, any imbalances you have will feel more pronounced, so a unilateral movement will help you recognize these and start ironing them out from day one. It's also quicker to set up and probably safer than a barbell press at a time when you might not have a spotter and might not be great at judging what you're capable of. We're then gonna stay on the same bench and do some incline dumbbell rows. It's a quick transition from the last exercise. The incline will help emphasize the upper back and traps rather than the lats. And it's an exercise that is pretty hard to get wrong in terms of technique. Next, we'll move to a chest fly and we're gonna use the pec deck machine for that. You can watch this video if you wanna know why I think that's one of, if not the best chest fly movement, but we're also choosing it because it's a quick and convenient transition into our next exercise, the reverse pec deck. This is gonna hit our rear delts as well as any exercise could, and that's a muscle group that I think is often overlooked and underrated when it comes to the overall aesthetic of a well-rounded physique, at least in my opinion. Finally, we'll finish up with some plain old dumbbell curls, a solid exercise with no setup or equipment required other than the dumbbells that you're using, so it's not something you're gonna be sat around waiting for. And that's your first training day. It should be a quick workout. You won't be in the gym forever, but you're still gonna get some really good return on investment for the time you do spend training. Day two is a straightforward leg day, starting with your compound movement, the leg press. Now there are many options here for leg press, squat, lunge movements, but in terms of the time commitment and technique learning curve, you're best starting off how most of us did with the humble leg press. Further down the line, you can move to more free weight movements, but right now you just simply don't need those to start building muscle. And a lot of those do come with a much greater time commitment for one reason or another. Next, we'll hit some seated leg curl for hamstrings. This will give your quads a rest from all the work they did during the leg press, so we can get more out of your next exercise, the leg extension. Pretty much the only quad isolation exercise, so this should feature somewhere in most programs if there's space for it. Next, standing calf raise. You could use a Smith machine for these if you prefer, but if you do, use a step or a ramp if you can. Eventually, you might want to include a seated calf raise too, but whilst we're keeping it simple with one or the other, the straight leg should come first. We'll finish up with some hyper extensions, which can progress into weighted hyper extensions when you're ready. Again, if we're talking time commitment, fatigue, and learning curve, I'd say these are the best place to start for a beginner hip hinge movement. Day three, we'll start with pull-ups, if you can do multiple sets of five or more, but that might be a stretch for most beginners, so some assisted pull-ups would likely be your first exercise. 
We'd then go into our vertical press movement. I'd use a seated Smith machine here, but on a flat bench. I really like this as a shoulder press, as it has a similar bar path to your free bar overhead press, but with the advantages of a Smith machine for speed and stability, which often means that you can press more weight. It's also really good for pumping out some extra partial reps after you've hit failure on your final set, if you are that way inclined. Then we're gonna move to some straight arm pull downs for our lat isolation movement. These are one of very few lat isolation exercises but they're pretty much easier and all around better than the alternatives. Then for our lateral raise, we'll use a machine if you have access to one. I think this is the best lateral raise for everyone, regardless of experience, but beginners in particular can struggle with the technique on dumbbell lateral raises. Finally, for a tricep isolation, we'll do some overhead extensions with a rope. No hunting around for dumbbells, easy technique and simply more effective than the push down alternative. So a few things to mention about this split. We're alternating between muscle groups like this to reduce the fatigue that lingers from the first time you hit a muscle to the second. You can swap biceps and triceps here if you want, that's fairly irrelevant. I've put biceps in the horizontal day because I think pull-ups work your biceps more than rows, but it's probably marginal, feel free to do what you want. We could swap around our first two exercises and therefore our next two if we wanted to prioritize hitting a particular muscle group first in the workout, but because of how the exercises are grouped together, it wouldn't actually make much difference. I've put the leg day in the middle so I could break up the two upper body days with as much space as possible while still having at least a day in between every session. So why this over a typical push-pull leg split? Splitting your upper body sessions into a horizontal and vertical rather than a push and pull is going to mean three things. One, better performance for each individual exercise because of less crossover fatigue. You'll overhead press more after a pull-up than you would after a dumbbell press. You'll row more after a press than you would after a pull-up, etc. Second, less muscle soreness, which is something that will be at an all-time high when you're just starting out, and it can be quite inconvenient. This will come partly from the fact that you're effectively doing less work per muscle per session, but also from number three, increased frequency. You see, even though you hit biceps directly with your horizontal day, you're still hitting them when you do pull-ups. Same for triceps, same for rear delts, front delts, and some back muscles that are involved in both pull movements. This means not only are they getting worked to some extent more often, but due to that, they'll acclimate faster and experience less soreness or at least you'll get over that soreness stage quicker. Now we could have ran with this theme and split up our leg workout across multiple days and pretty much ended up with something that we'd call a full body split. But because many of the leg muscles have much more distinct and unrelated actions, I don't think you need to. The maximum number of exercises any individual muscle group contributes to significantly in this leg day is two same as our other days. Now compare that to a typical push or pull day, which could get to three or four. And we're still kind of in keeping with that opposing muscle group theme when we think about a leg extension and a leg curl. Still, a full body type split is a really good alternative if you're training three days a week. And I'm not saying PPL splits are bad. I'm just saying they're probably better when you're training more often. Now, I mentioned at the start that a beginner routine should allow for progression. So I wanna give some guidance on how you could adapt this routine over time. One way would be to increase your sets. To begin with, I'd start with a very low number per exercise. For most, I'd say stick to three. This is quite minimal, but for complete beginners, it's enough to make some good progress. I'd work up to four sets per exercise and eventually to five sets for some exercises or possibly even for all of them if you have the time. At that point, you'll be hitting 10 sets per workout for some muscles. And for most people doing straight sets with normal rest periods, that should be viewed as an upper limit. That means the next step would be increasing the number of training days. If you wanted to move from three to four training days, I actually wouldn't change the split at all. I'd just do four days in a week and then keep rolling over into the following week. So week one might look like this, week two like this, week three like this, and so on. I'd only change the split if and when you eventually move to five days. At that point, I'd add an upper day and another leg day. So the split would look like this. The leg day would look similar to the first, but it's worth getting a bit of variation in there. And the upper day could reflect your priorities, but would generally look like a bit of a hybrid between your horizontal and vertical days. Another way to adapt this program is by changing some of the exercises. Although they're all pretty good exercises straight out of the gate, some of them are chosen at least in part for their conversion 
convenience because we're still thinking about adherence at that beginner stage. But eventually you might actually want to spend longer in the gym. So you can dedicate the time and energy to those exercises that take a bit more setup, but are ultimately worth it in the long run. I have quite a few videos talking about exercises and which I think should make up the core of a program. So you can check out those in the description below. The final thing to mention is tracking your lifts. Of course, if the goal is to build muscle, you should always be trying to get stronger in rep ranges that promote muscle growth. So whenever you can complete all of your sets on a given weight, increase it next time, then stick on the new weight until you complete all of your sets and so on. It might be a bit of an arduous task to track every single lift if you're a beginner. So either just choose a few, I would suggest these, or you can use my app for which there is a free seven day trial in the description. Jordan,